at the hip that a hip and knee that we are going to be length testing. So then when we get to the knee, we won't have any because we will have covered them all here. So we didn't have any muscle length tests when we talked about the trunk. So I want to go back and review what we've talked about when we talk about muscle length testing. So for the upper extremity, we did have a couple of muscle length tests for one joint muscles. For the lower extremity, all of our muscle length tests that are special tests are going to be two joint muscles. So when we're looking at two joint muscles, what are we measuring for? Does anyone remember the term, two words? Passive insufficiency. Passive insufficiency, okay? So in order to test for passive insufficiency, what do we want to do at one joint? At the first joint, we're going to maximally lengthen it. And then what are we going to do at the second joint? We're going to start it in a shortened position, but then we're going to measure how much range they have. So we're going to measure its maximum length at that second joint after we've maximally lengthened it at the first joint. So let's take hamstrings. So hamstrings cross the hip and they cross the knee. What is the action at the hip? Flexion. Flexion. And what is the action at the knee? Flexion. Not only do you do simple math, but you know the hamstring <laughs> down. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so if we are going to measure hamstring length, and we're going to measure, so what is one way that we could measure hamstring length? So we're gonna we're gonna lengthen at the knee. So what would if it's if it is a flexor? How do we lengthen the hamstring at the knee? Extend. We extend it, and then what motion would we measure at the hip? Flexion. Flexion. That is called the straight leg raise. Okay, and we'll go over that today. What is the other way we could measure hamstring length? Flex the knee. So we'll flex the knee. We'll, we'll measure at the knee. So what are we going to do to the hip? Extend, extend it. Well, extending the hip would shorten it, right? And we want to maximally lengthen it. So we're gonna flex the hip. We're, we're gonna, <laughs> did I screw that up? We wanna maximally lengthen it at the hip, so we are going to flex, flex it. Is that what you guys said and I corrected you in the wrong way? So we're gonna flex it, and then what are we gonna measure at the knee? Extension. Extension, okay? That's called the 90-90 test. Now, we don't actually maximally flex the hip because that pulls in the pelvic motion. So instead, we're going to start the hip at 90 degrees of flexion, the knee at 90 degrees of flexion, and that's why it's called the 90-90 test. Okay? I started with hamstring because it's easy to think about. Um, but we can do the same thing for our rectus femoris. So if we were going to measure rectus femoris, which is a two-joint muscle, it crosses the hip and the knee, what does it do with the hip? Flexes the hip, and what does it do with the knee? Extends. Extends the knee, okay? So that's where we screwed up. We said hamstring flex both joints. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really tricky. Yeah. Yeah. So we extend the hip, flex the <laughs> knee, <laughs> and the rectus femoris flex the hip and extends the knee. So hamstrings and rectus should be opposite. I didn't even miss it. I was just so impressed with your speed. That's why I didn't answer the rest of them, was because I was thinking about it, and I realized. <laughs> well, I'm glad you self-corrected, kind of. Yeah. You let us continue, you let us continue yeah, right. on that path. Yeah. But, um, so, so for rectus femoris, we could potentially do the same thing. We could lengthen it one joint and measure it the other. Now for rectus, what we tend to do is lengthen it at the hip and measure at the knee. Okay. Now there's no reason why we couldn't do it the other way, but the way that we do it clinically is that we lengthen at the hip and measure at the knee. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. Now, we do have a one joint muscle that crosses the hip. Well, we call it a one joint muscle. It's not really. Is our iliopsoas. Okay? And so we're going to measure iliopsoas length. So what does that do at the hip? Flexes. Flexes the hip. So we're going to measure its extension. So if you remember, um, when we do documentation for length testing, we're testing the length of a muscle and then we're measuring an action that is an action that is opposite that of that muscle, okay? So when we go through documentation, I will, I will point all of that out, okay? 
So we have two different ways to test iliopsoas and um, rectus femoris. I hate the second way, but Dr. Bryant convinced me to keep it in again this year because he came up with some reason that it was good. So we still have it thanks to him, which is probably better for you guys. Okay, so first we're going to do the Thomas test. So Tanner, I'm going to have you stand up like, over there. Now, we talked about when we were doing range of motion, pelvic position is going to be super important for the muscle length test of the zip as well. And you're going to turn around for me. So what you're going to have your patient do is, um, I am going to want the table to hit about here on your thigh. Okay, so you're going to sit on the table so that your knee is going to be, there you go. Yeah, yeah that's good. And I'm going to measure this leg. So what I'd like you to do is bring this knee up to your chest and go ahead and just lie down. Now, what I'm going to do is take your leg from you just for a minute. Thank you. And I'm going to find that, that neutral position. Okay, then I'm going to ask you to hold that again. Now, to measure his um, iliopsoas length, I can do one of two things. I can measure his hip extension with a goniometer, okay? And normal would be zero. So if I did, are you okay that way? We cut that a little bit closer to your knees. Mm -hmm. So if I were going to measure hip extension, okay. So he has. You're measuring hip flexion, right? No, I'm measuring hip extension. He has, how do you do that? It's a, so we're tightness on a flexor. If he was tight, if he was up here, mm -hmm. I want to know how much extension he has. Because if he's tight, it's going to be a negative number. Got it. I was looking at our slide where we said okay. he has hip flexion. Okay. So we're going to measure this motion, but if he, if he was tight, he would be lacking extension, and so I would be documenting that number, okay, because he's in flexion. But because he can actually hit the table and he's actually at three degrees of hip extension, I would document hip extension for iliopsoas, and it would be a number. So in that case, the documentation that I have up there is someone who is actually tight for his hip flexor, okay? So then I would be documenting um, the hip extension and lacking that extension. Tanner has great length of his iliopsoas, so he actually has three degrees of extension, and so I can document it that way. Now, if you wanted to go with a tape measure method, what you would do is measure the um, as close to the knee as possible, and that distance from the back of the leg to the table would be the tape measure method. He's on the table, so it would be zero centimeters because he's making contact. Okay, so in that example, 7.2 centimeters would be awfully tight, but that again would be someone who is, well right now he's demonstrating 12.3 centimeters, okay? So that would be someone who's off the table, okay? So because it's a hip flexor, we are measuring hip extension. Now remember, it's a passive test, right? Now, are you still comfortable? Yeah. We go right into measuring the length of the rectus. Now, he's just, his leg is relaxed. Okay, so gravity is pulling him down, and we're going to measure that knee flexion angle. Remember, that's the opposite direction of the um, action of the rectus. And he has 50 two degrees, okay? Now, 52 degrees, normal would be if his leg, if he went to 90, okay? Now, do you see what happens when I push him into 90? He starts to flex his hip because he doesn't have that available range. Well, you're getting better. You're loosening up a little bit, so it's pretty tight. Um, so the leg should just be able to hang straight down. Now, there's a little bit of, um, yeah, as soon as I, Flex him, do you see how his, his thigh is coming off the table? Um, 
I do not apply over pressure. I measure wherever that leg relaxes. Some people will apply an overpressure to see how far they can get them. I feel like when I apply that overpressure, there are other compensations, so I don't. Um, I think that's just a personal, personal choice, okay? So the big thing with the Thomas test is you need to, they, they sit, they lie back down with their knee already up. The reason you do that is if you have them lie down with their legs hanging off the table, their back is gonna be really lordotic. This way they're going down with their pelvis pretty close to neutral. You need to correct the leg to make sure that it is truly neutral and then measure at the hip for iliopsoas and at the knee for rectus femoris. Okay? Can you mind just going for me, please? Dr. So H. You, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, for the knee, was normal 90? <clears throat> normal would be 90. And that's if, like, he naturally, his leg was relaxed at 90. And he hung straight down. Okay, yeah. Cool. Now, you're going to document flexion. Now, it's not a negative number because he had some flexion. Okay? So it's not that he's lacking flexion. So even though his rectus femoris was tight, it's still not a negative number. Whereas if he lacked extension, he would, it would have been a negative number. And that's partly why you need to write your motion down up there so that you think that one through. So for the Thomas test, you need to do iliopsoas and rectus? Typically you would okay. measure both because okay. you're discriminating between one joint muscle tightness versus a two joint muscle tightness. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And after you assess their pelvis to make sure that they are neutral after you take them back? Watch your patient after you let go again because they will have a tendency to just pull themselves right back into their posterior tilt. Into a posterior tilt. And if they pull into a posterior tilt, you're going to artificially create a positive result. Okay? Because that's going to, if they go into a posterior pelvic tilt, that's going to pull their leg up off the table. Okay? All right, on your stomach for me, please. All on? All on, yeah. Okay. Um, can you like that for me? So, for the, um, for the prone test, you really need to test rectus femoris first before you can test iliopsoas. Because the test, bless you, bless you. the test position for iliopsoas is with, I'm sorry for the, uh, yeah, for the iliopsoas is 90 degrees of knee flexion, which makes no sense. So here what you wanna do is the person is lying on the table, you wanna put your hand on their ASIS, okay? Because what I'm watching for is when I passively bring his foot up, how far can I bring it before his hip comes off the table, okay? So this is the prone rectus femoris test. So I'm folding on here. Go ahead and let your leg, let me take it for you. But there you go. Okay, and there he starts to come up, okay? So now I can take this measurement And I have six, oh, sorry, 58 degrees. Okay. Now, the thing that's tricky about this one is let's say his iliopsoas is tight. He may already start with his hip off the table. Okay, can you flex your hip over on this side? Um, th yeah, there you go. So if, he, if he's already off the table, um, you're going, when you measure rect, that's iliopsoas tightness because we have the rectus on slack right now, okay? So that in that case, we're going to raise his leg and see how far we can go before it goes up even further, okay? But if with his leg straight, he already has some hip flexion, we're going to take that measurement and that is going to be his prone iliopsoas number, okay? If on the table, um, his hip is not coming off the table, okay? So it's nice and flat. What we're going to do is take up the slack of his iliopsoas, or I'm sorry, his rectus femoris, wow. And I'm going to see how far I can come up before his pelvis comes up, okay? And then I will take that hip measurement. So this is what the advantage was last time. If he has tight hip flexors and can't get to zero, the other test is good because it won't be down on the table. But this test is better if someone actually has quite good flexibility or needs more flexibility, you'd have to measure it in prone. Okay? 
So then I would measure that hip extension. Now this one is one where you would probably need an aid because the legs are heavy and it is a passive test. Okay. All right. Can you flip back on your while even while you're here? Why don't you roll over onto that side, right? Yeah. So if they're prone on the table and their ASI is coming off, then that would be a zero. No, so no. if they're, so if his ASIS is already off the table, if his knee's straight, he's going to be kind of in this position, mm -hmm. so he would be lacking extension. Be like a negative one. So a negative okay. something. Okay, so we talked about hamstrings and rectus femoris and iliopsoas, but we also have a muscle length test for the iliotibial band, which is going to um, attach proximally through the TFL on the iliac crest. And then what's weird is the, um, the attachment down on Gertie's tubercle actually passes on the anterior aspect of the axis of the knee. So to lengthen the iliotibial band, you need the knee bent, okay? Because of where it crosses that axis. If it crosses behind the axis of the knee, then we would wanna lengthen it by extending. But because Gertie's tubercle is anterior to the axis of the knee, you actually need to bend it to make it um, lengthen. So for this one, I'm gonna have you bend the bottom leg. There you go. We're doing, modif we're doing over and modified over. So go ahead and relax your head. Can you rest it? There was a pillow over there. Can someone toss him right there? That Emily, you know, she's kind of a tough one. Okay, so this one, because the iliotibial band is attaching through the rectus to the pelvis, this is one where you are going to have to apply a ton of pressure to the pelvis, right? Now, I, again, how I do it is I take the palm of my hand and I go right under his iliac crest and I am pushing and I am locking my elbow so I can use my body weight to push, okay? Now this test, you do not take a measurement, it's just positive or negative. Positive is bad, negative means unremarkable. A, a negative result or an unremarkable result is that I can drop his leg below neutral. A positive test is that as I start to lower his leg, I can't get it back to a neutral position or anatomical position. That would be a positive test. So we're gonna start with his knee bent and I'm gonna pull, <laughs> let me have it, there you go. Your hip flexors are a little tight, did you know that? Oh yeah. We just measured them. Okay, so I am locking my elbow and I'm pushing pretty hard, right? Yeah. And I'm starting above zero and now I'm gonna use my body to lower his leg. Again, this is a passive test. Can you feel my elbow? Yeah. It's slowly going on its own. Okay. And he would be negative on this side, okay? Now, it may be that his pelvis moved because my elbow really was going out of joint. It was just going <laughs> as I was pushing, okay? So it may be that he was tight because I, I couldn't apply as much pressure as I would like. Now, for the modified over, we're going to have the legs straight. And we're going to start up again above uh, zero and push. And I'm not going to do the test this time because of my elbow. But then I'm going to slowly lower again, okay? So modified over is knee straight. The true over is with the knee bent. Why are they two? Okay. In theory, which I don't know that it holds up, is that if it's the TFL, if it's the contractile tissue itself that's tight, both of those tests should have the same result. If it's the band itself, you will have tightness with the first test and not the second. So looking at that, but when I try to apply that thought process to the anatomy, I can't get it to add up in my head. So but that's we, the thought. Should we know that it differentiates between the two or no? No, just know the two tests. Okay? All right, so that's over and modified over. So then we have hamstring length, our, our last two. So we have you lying in the back. I don't think these are on the Sheet, maybe we could add the over and modified over should be. Yeah, the, the hamstring. hamstring the hamstring ninety ninety. Oh, now. they might be with the knee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So, does anyone have their knee checklist printed and accessible? I do have it on a word document. Okay. I have it. Yeah. It's uh, hamstring ninety nineties on knee and straight leg raises on knee. Okay. Yeah. 
Do you, we can wait. We can wait. Okay.